Exodus 002. At this point, the Bible goes through the genealogy to remind the reader the that took they we're going to try that again. At this point, the Bible goes through the genealogy to remind the reader that the trek that God took to get to Moses, making the reader realize that Moses was handpicked for the task. Originally, only 70 people went to Egypt, and now there are 2 million. They want out of Egypt and slavery. The battle is on. To the Egyptians, Pharaoh is God. He is now to take on God. God versus Pharaoh. Pharaoh couldn't relate to an unseen God. Moses was 80 years old now. Aaron was 83. First up, Serpent Rod. 2 Timothy 3.8 speaks of the opposing wizards. Next come the ten plagues. The plagues are targeted at Egyptian gods. First plague, blood plague. Pharaoh would go down to the Nile and offer praise to the river god Hopi, a big fat man with the breasts of a woman. They would also celebrate Osiris as the Nile was his bloodstream. The Egyptian magicians returned the favor. They turned everything into blood. Next, the frog plague. Pestilence on livestock. A temple was given to the ugliest goddess the Egyptians have, Kanun's wife. According to Egypt, this goddess was the creator of man. It was an offense to kill a frog. Hopi, the god of the Nile, is depicted to be holding the frog, and out of the frog's mouth came nourishment. Moses told Pharaoh, Tell me when you want these frogs to go away to show God is causing this. Pharaoh said, Do it tomorrow. Tomorrow? Deal with your problems now, not tomorrow. Next, Lice Plague. Geb, Geb was Egypt's earth god who reports to Osiris. It is believed they were gnats. The magicians were called in and couldn't replicate the plague and declared this plague was definitely from God. Next plague, Swarm of Flies. It was the Ichanuman fly which will lay its eggs on anything. It can latch itself to the human, including the eyelids and nose, and cause them to sting. The god Uachit was the name of the fly, which was a type of scarab beetle. This plague would not happen in the land of Goshen, where God's people were. Remember, Joseph settled Jacob there. God now has Pharaoh's attention. Pharaoh says now they can go and sacrifice, but it must be in the land. In other words, Pharaoh was willing to compromise. Next, severe pestilence. All the livestock. A temple was given to the ugliest Oops. All the livestock in Egypt died, not in the land of Goshen. Boils breaking out in sores. Nile, the Nile blistering happens when sandstorms and intense heat of the air during the time the Nile is overflowing. Niet is a god they have they have that brings all the blessings in the air that they would pray to in order for this to go away. False worship was shut down because the magicians could not dress in their priestly apparel to help them because of the boils. Next, fiery hail. The focus will go to the goddess of the air, Niet, and show Pharaoh that God is the God. 
the Egyptians have had enough because now the Egyptians are starting to leave Egypt as well. Pharaoh declares, I have sinned this time. Titus 1, 16. The flax and the barley are struck. This has lasted so far for nine months. This time frame is from the flooding of the Nile with blood and the season of the barley being destroyed. Next, locusts. They shall eat up everything that was left behind by the hail. Now the magicians are asking about how long this should last. It's been nine months so far. These locusts can strip the back, strip back bark from a tree. The east wind brought them in. They ate everything that was left. Next, darkness for three days. This may not seem like much, but until you realize how much the sun, how much sun the body needs to survive and be happy. Finally, firstborn. The important thing about this event is that it is the first Passover celebration. Many things happen at this event. They won't be discussed here because they are mainly Jewish and I feel I wouldn't do them justice. This is when they performed the first Passover. The Passover covered many things that do their Due to their being of Jewish background, I don't feel I could do them justice, so I won't go into them here. Now, the Israelites are ready to possess the land of Canaan. They had to rid the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Hivites, the Jebusites. These are all offspring of Ham, if you remember, who was cursed by Noah. This was explained earlier about what Ham had done to Noah. God instead led the Israelites the long way around to Canaan because the northern route was covered by military outposts that would make the Israelites afraid. Deuteronomy 8 explains this. Ezekiel 10 explains a little more. Here is something <clears throat> rather important to bring up to the surface. God told Moses that the Israelites that as long as they followed his statutes, none of what happened in, to Egypt would happen to them. God was speaking to Moses specifically about what God had done to the Egyptians and that, that God wouldn't do this to Israel. This is a direct blessing and people say it applies to today. No, it doesn't. When God speaks specifically, it doesn't apply to any other time or incident. Sometimes people will take words, paragraphs, verses out of the Bible and post them on their walls and say, that sounds so good, it must apply to me. No, it doesn't. You need to take it down. The Pharaoh finally gives in and lets them go free. After they departed, Pharaoh's heart is hardened yet again, and he calls on his army and pursues them. Many people will say that the Israelites crossed the Red Sea at its lowest, and that's how they got across. But this would be an even greater miracle, because as soon as the Egyptian army was well into the sea, it swallowed them up. To have an eight-foot-tall horse at full gallop with at least one man in a chariot behind it, to have been taken down by water that is at its lowest point so that a man was able to walk across it, would be an even bigger miracle, being that the water that low, that low couldn't stop a stampede of men on chariots. Which miracle do you pick? Next, we go to the Israelites across the sea and starting their mourning of not being in moaning of not being in Egypt where they were used to food, water and bedtime. 